All right, this is going to be short, this vital truth, because then the choir is going to be enlisted. They're going to leave the risers, and they're going to go throughout the building, and they're going to help us pray. They're going to pray for you. Because this verse, this vital truth for Christians is um, right now, from what I can gather, traveling around the world, Guyana, South Africa this year, um, lots of places, Poland, been in Korea, Japan, everywhere, all over South America, Canada, all, all the states of America, just about. This is, this is what's needed. Even with people reading the Bible and churches that are Bible-centered, this is the very elusive truth or hard to accept because of Satan working in church denominational traditions to scare people off from this all-important subject. When John the Baptist, we'll start with his story next week, God willing, he was born a little bit before Jesus, and they were related somehow, Mary and Elizabeth, the mothers were. While he was baptizing people, people were making a big thing about him because he was so powerful, even though he did no miracle. And he said this to get people rightly focused. He said... I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Notice, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry, that was the, do, rule, uh, the role of a servant. So he's just saying, I, this one coming after me, I'm not worthy to be a servant. You think I'm, I'm something? I'm not even worthy to be this man's servant, the one who's coming after me, the Messiah. I baptize you with water because you're confessing your sins. But he won't baptize in water. He's going to baptize you in the Holy Spirit and in fire. That's one of the roles of Jesus. Not only Lamb of God, Savior of the world, etc. But one of the titles of Jesus is the one who baptizes in the Holy Spirit and in fire. In fact, when Jesus went out with his disciples, he never baptized anyone in water himself. He had the disciples do the baptizing because he had his own unique baptism, which couldn't be done until after he died on the cross as a substitute for our sins, paying the price fully so that we'll never be condemned, we'll never be judged for our sins because he took the full judgment of our sins on him. Aren't you happy for that? Can we say amen to that? We never can be judged because he became sin. What sin? Our sin. He had no sin. He died for that, rose on the third day, was ascended to the right hand of the Father. And then he poured out, as he promised, the Holy Spirit. He said, I'm going to send you another helper. He will be with you. He'll be in you. I've been with you and didn't accomplish that much in terms of discipleship. Have you ever thought about that or noticed that, that Jesus spent three and a half years modeling the Christ life. I mean, he was Christ. Teaching, doing miracles, observing. And when he was arrested and the pressure came, what did he produce out of those 12? One betrayed him. Another doubted to the end. The other 10 all fled. And Peter denied him three times. So obviously something else was needed. And that's why Jesus said, I've been with you. But he, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, just as much a person as Jesus and the Father, a three-in-one, one God, divided or manifesting himself in three different persons. So he, when he comes, he's going to change everything. I'm putting him in charge of the church. No pastor's in charge of the church. I've been in charge of you when I was on earth. You didn't move until I told you. When he comes, you're not to move until he tells you. I've been your source. He'll be your source. He is the executor and the administrator of the Christian church. The Brooklyn Tabernacle does not belong to Pastor Jim Simbel or any other pastor or any other church. You wouldn't know that as you visit, and pastors can get very di dictatorial and charismatic figures who the church is centered around, but that's not the way God ever planned it to be. 
God doesn't base churches on men and women. He bases churches on Jesus Christ, who ministers through the Holy Spirit, whom, whom he sent. So he raises up missionaries. He raises up pastors. He's the only one who can make somebody an apostle or a prophet or a teacher. He's the one who gifts the church. He's the one who gives energy. He's the one who gives grace. He's the one. The church is supposed to be a, a spiritual organism, not a, an organization like Apple or AT&T. That, and when the church uh, world thinking, corporate thinking invades the church, we're cooked. We're chopped meat. Because now we're running a church opposite to what Jesus said how it was to be run. It was to be run on spiritual principles, spiritual power, etc. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Those are not two separate baptisms. It is a typical thing in the Bible for emphasis. Another adjective or noun is used. So he baptized you with the Holy Spirit, i.e. with fire. Now, fire is one of the symbols of the Holy Spirit in the, in the Bible. Anybody think here in the choir? Let's just take the alto section. Anybody think of another symbol of the Holy Spirit? Dove, water, oil. Water is a symbol of the Holy Spirit in the Bible. And anywhere believes in me, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. He spoke this about the Spirit, which was not yet given because Christ had not yet been glorified. Oil, everything in the Old Testament was anointed with oil as a symbol or a type, T-Y-P-E, uh, of the coming Spirit. That's what set it apart and made it holy. The thing was made holy because the, the oil was upon it. So water, oil, wind, wind. In fact, the same word, breath, wind, spirit, all is the same word in the, in the Greek. And that's why Jesus said to Nicodemus, the wind blows the, where it wants to. And you can't figure out where it's coming and where it's going. And that's everyone who's born of the spirit is like that. There's a mystery to the way the spirit works. You can't predict them. You can't put them in a box. You can't organize a service and say, this is what we'll do, no more, no less. Now you've said goodbye to the Holy Spirit because he won't go in anybody's box. I know, but pastor, that's when I grew up. That's all I know. Well, it doesn't matter what you know or I know or what I saw and you saw. We're trying to go to the Bible and find out what God wants us to have. All in favor, say aye. aye. So... <clears throat> The wind blows where it wants to, and he just does things and makes suggestions and guides and leads, just like Jesus did when he was here with his disciples. But I want you to just focus on this. This is the most needed thing in the whole world for me, for me, for me, for me first, and for you. And every church, every church I visit, every denominational group of ministers. I'm going to Philadelphia, uh, Baltimore this week on Thursday to talk to a couple hundred ministers that are being gathered. I know that's the greatest need in their life and in their churches. I know it. There are other needs, sound doctrine, justification by grace through faith. There's many good, important teachings. But the one that's most absent almost everywhere you go in the day of production and church as a happening rather than a moving of the Holy Spirit is this truth. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit with fire. What, what is it about the Holy Spirit that makes it like fire? When you are baptized and filled and immersed and controlled by the Holy Spirit, you experience the fire of God, the fire of the Holy Spirit. He'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Fire penetrates and changes whatever it touches. Water, if you pour it on these flowers, they'll be just wet. Um, what are they called? Poinsettias. They'll be wet poinsettias. If you put oil on them, they'll be oil, oily poinsettias. You light a match, get this thing burning, or this carpet, it won't be wet, it won't be oily. It'll be no, no mas, a carpet. Fire changes everything. It gets down to the bottom of everything. It, it penetrates. 
when the Holy Spirit comes on you and me, he gets down to the real deal inside of us. All excuses are burned away. All lies that we tell ourselves, all pretense, all phoniness, all, oh, hi, hi, how are you? Oh, great to see you. And secretly, there's, there's a, a grudge and there's animosity. It goes right to that. It goes like a, like a bullet right to everything that's pretense. And it changes things. It burns up fleshly things, worldly things, carnal things. It gets your eyes on Jesus. It makes you uh, realize the shortness of life. It, it totally transforms a life. When the Holy Spirit came on Paul, uh, he, it changed him from a, um, a persecutor of the church to a mighty apostle. Peter was a denier and frightened as a chicken. Uh, and then when the Holy Spirit comes on him, he's so bold, he's willing to be crucified upside down. He doesn't even care anymore. He said, no, don't crucify me upside, right side up, because that's the way my master was crucified. You do me upside down. I, and I'm not afraid of your death. And I'm not afraid of your threats. And I'm not afraid of everything, because when the spirit comes, he changes everything inside of us. Come on, can we say amen to that? Can you go to church and not have fire? Yep. And it's boring, and it's predictable, and it's sad. Can you pastor a church and preach and not have the fire of God burning in you and working in you? Yes. And it can easily turn into acting and a performance, even though the Bible itself is being preached. And the church is based on organization and gimmicks rather than the power of the almighty God who we serve. He'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He penetrates. He humbles. He burns up pride like a loose piece of napkin that you light a match to. The pride can't live there. Are you kidding? When the fire of God comes, he's going to burn up everything that's perishable, everything that's junk, everything that's carnal. And I say that because a lot of us want to serve God. We want to be more like Jesus, but we think somehow that by introspection and getting counseling from someone or trying harder or reading a new spiritual book or getting a new translation, that that's going to change us. Listen, the fire of God, the Holy Spirit is the one that Jesus has sent to change us. If any man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creation. Why? Because the Spirit has come on. Let's say amen one more time. Amen. I've tried to change myself and I've tried to rectify my faults and all of us, we see things in the flesh that are in us and we try to get rid of this and that and a lack of, of compassion and with this and that and we're looking and we're picking up this and we gotta remove that. Oh, I, I praise God, I got room. Oh, I see some more, I gotta get room with that. You know the best thing to do is light a match and just have a big fire and let the fire burn everything out. And even the graces that we have, they're many times mixed with pride and they're mixed with other things. And, and the fire, when he comes, he purifies the things that he's doing in us. So that the sermon isn't mostly about Jesus, it's all about Jesus. Only Jesus will be glorified when the singer sings. When Karen sings and the fire of God is on her, like it was this morning and also in um, uh, Georgetown, Guyana, uh, then it's not even about Karen. You don't even notice Karen. You know she's singing, but it's all about Jesus. Why? The fire has come. He'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He burns up the carnal and the human so that Jesus can, can come out. And he'll change you. And that'll break, that'll break down crack cocaine. That fire, what are you kidding me? That fire will break, burn out immorality. It'll burn out homosexuality. It'll burn out greed. It'll burn out uh, uh, covetousness. It'll burn out racism. What are you kidding? You don't like people who don't, aren't like you? You just need a fire. You need to be set on fire. That fire will burn that out of you. Listen. Some of us have grown up around it. We don't, we, we've been inculcated with it from our childhood. We took it in with our mother's milk, and we took it in with the churches we were in. Some of them so sad. It's like, like the church that I grew up in had some good things, but what negative things were in it? 
And the only thing that could get that out of me is the fire of God. My father was an alcoholic for 22 years. So if you analyze me and you give me therapy, you'll say, well, you're never going to be right and you're going to be off for the rest of your life. Are you kidding? When the fire of the Holy Spirit comes, he sets you free. You're free. I'm dealing with someone who has bitterness toward their mother and father. I could talk to them until the cows come home. It won't change them. They need the fire of the Holy Spirit burning out that resentment. And that way God gets all the glory. Nobody's going to say, oh, I talked to Pastor Simbola. He helped me. My foot, Jesus helps you through the power of the Holy Spirit. One more time. Let's say amen. Number two, it not only permeates and changes things. Please remember that, everybody. Please remember that. I have to remind myself every day. It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Self-effort is, is, the, is the bane of all spiritual living because we're all going to try harder to be what we're supposed to be as if we could. If you could, he wouldn't have sent the spirit. He sent the spirit because we're helpless. Oh, no, that's too negative. Oh, yeah, how about this? Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. Number two, he gives light. Did you know that electricity and lamps and lights are a rather modern convention? For most of the history of this world, the day started at dawn and it ended when the sun went down. Nothing was done at night. Because especially when it was cloudy, nobody could see. When the Israelites were brought out of captivity in Egypt, a pillar of cloud led them during the day. And at night, when nobody could see, they still could be led and move. Why? Because there was a pillar of fire. And fire gives light. When the Holy Spirit fills you, when you long for him, when you want to be controlled and you get desperate for him, and you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, and you're tired of going to church only, and you're tired of religiosity, and you're tired of, uh, tired of intellect, merely intellectual Christianity, figuring everything out in your mind, and you want to get back to the primitive Christianity that Jesus told us about. You'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Fire gives light. You will open this Bible and truth will come jumping off the pages like you never even saw before. You're going to read through the New Testament <clears throat> in the new year, God willing, and there'll be truth on every page. You won't be, you'll be, you'll run out of pencils. You'll, you'll just be writing all over the place. Well, I never saw that. What is that? That's the spirit of revelation of light that comes from the Holy Spirit. Look, he wrote the book. He's the only one who can teach the book. I can't teach the book. I can try. A teacher is, has a place, obviously, in the church. But ultimate teaching comes by the Holy Spirit. How many have ever read a verse that you've read 50 times before, and suddenly the thing just jumps out at you, and you go, oh, wow, is that what it means? Come on, lift your hand if that's ever happened. What is that? That's the light of the fire of the Holy Spirit. But not only that, he leads us in the decisions in life. Do I change my job? Do I buy get that apartment? Do I buy that car? Uh, this, this, this relationship that's developing, is it of God or is it not of God? What should I do? I mean, these, are, these things are not answered in the Bible. The Bible gives answer to doctrine and right and wrong and, and, and what's moral and immoral before God. But there's a lot of important <clears throat> decisions. How do I raise this child? Unlike the other <laughs> Three, you know, Pastor Petri and I, he's had his little daughter, Charlotte, who's two and a half. She's a trip, I'm telling you, my granddaughter. And he has his three other children, Luke and Claire and Levi, my grandson. And, and then he's got Charlotte. And Charlotte's unlike any of them. Because no, no, no two kids are the same. And he just said to me the other day, he said, Pastor... She's caused more trouble. She gets into more things than the other three put together. <laughs> but my daughter was that way. So what goes around comes around. How many say amen? <laughs> and poor Pastor Petri has to put up with it. I said to her yesterday here at the rehearsal, she's in the Christmas show. Wait till you see that. I said... I know I shouldn't say this, so don't go, oh. I said to her, Charlotte, 
who do you love better, mama, ma, Nana or Papa? And she just looked at me and she went, Nana. <laughs> so I said, okay, you love Nana, but could I have a kiss? And she went, no. <laughs> so I made believe like I was crying and I went, <clears throat> as if maybe that would break her down and I could get a kiss. She turned to Pastor Brian and she went, Daddy, look, he's crying. <laughs> It's a cold woman, boy. That's a hard-hearted woman. How to raise a child. How to handle illness. What to do with a, a parent who's starting to show signs of uh, some disease, mental uh, disease or, or, or a problem, forgetting now. not rec I mean, There's so many things in life. What do you do? God says, I don't want you to figure it out. With your limited IQ, I'm God. I know everything. I will show you what to do. How? Because my spirit will lead you. My spirit will guide you. He'll pour light into your life and he'll show you what to do. You won't go to the left or the right. You'll hear a voice behind you saying, this is the void. This is the way. Walk in it. How many believe the Holy Spirit can still guide and lead? All the messes that we get into because we don't seek the light and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. In, in permeates the churches, everything's down to the minute by uh, scripted. I go to these services, I just, I don't know what to do sometimes. You got 17 minutes to preach. Okay, can I shorten it and ask people to pray? No, 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 we're having a patriotic number that's going to last three minutes and 20 seconds, then we got to get the people out. And it's all as program. And then we have the audacity to say, oh God, open the windows, open up heaven and come down. How could he come down? There's no room to come down. They have the whole script of the meeting already laid out. Where could he come? How could he come? You got to make room for him. Let me close. The spirit permeates and changes everything. He will change you. And this is for Christians who already been serving God 30 years. There's more that God has for us. You're not satisfied with what you have, are you? How many want more? Say amen. amen. I want more. He'll give you light. And lastly, fire sets other things on fire. Water doesn't set everything on water. It doesn't, neither does oil. But fire ignites. It gets things hot. Remember the ultimate terrible indictment of a church? You're neither hot nor cold. Were they a Christian church? You bet. Look at it. Revelation 3. Church at Laodicea. You're neither hot, nor you're not cold. You're not cold and don't believe in me at all, but you're not hot. The Spirit's fire isn't working in you either. So what are you? You got just enough to be lukewarm, and I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. I don't want that. This is how people become soul winners. When people are touched by the fire, they start filling up whole rows of the church with people that they invite in. Nobody even told them to do it. Why? The fire's burning. You don't have to advertise a fire. It burns by itself. It's his own advertisement. En fuego. On fire. You have zeal to serve. You're not lazy anymore spiritually. You're different. Why? What church you go to? No, it's not my church. It's the Holy Spirit. He's burning in me. I got to do what God called me to do. Time's running out. See that sense of urgency? You think I could teach you urgency? Think Pastor Petri, the other pastors. You think we could talk you into urgency, psych you out, and get you all worked up to, like, I'm going to be urgent and, and have urgency. How long that lasts? About an hour. When the Spirit comes. You're, you're willing to do anything. You go crazy. You get crazy. Why? Because he's on fire. Read the history of the church, church history. Beside the book of Acts where, where it's obvious and patent, look at the history of the Christian church. Every great surge forward was the spirit came. The fire burned and suddenly churches multiply. People were witnessing. People came to the prayer meeting. People wanted to take communion. People had to come to the prayer meeting not because you beat them, but because they had to pray, because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of prayer. When the Holy Spirit's on you, you're going to pray about everything. What, what do you want to teach a carnal person who has no fire to pray? Lots of luck. The flesh will never pray. Flesh doesn't want to pray. The flesh, it's silly to pray. 
When the Spirit comes, the fire comes, pastors, pastor. Teachers really teach. Deacons, deek. <laughs> they're, they're on fire. Oh yeah, listen. Stephen was a deacon. So was Philip in the early church. See what, what happened to them when the fire got a hold of them. They went way beyond their duties as a helper, a deacon, who we treasure deacons and what they do. We have the greatest group you can imagine in our church. But it, you get fervent. You can't teach fervency. Please, you can't work people up. It's either there's fire or there's no fire. Am I right or wrong here, brothers? Am I, am I saying anything unbiblical? No, it's obvious. But this is an this is a un inconvenient truth for a lot of pastors and a lot of churches because I don't want that. If you play, brother, Holy Spirit, thou welcome. I, I don't want all that stand-up choir. I don't want all that wildfire in my church. Emotionalism. I'm not talking about emotionalism. You think I want to waste my life with emotionalism? Look at me. Do you think I want to waste my years working people into an emotional frenzy? What would that change? Fanaticism? I love the Bible as much as anybody here. I don't want to go outside the Bible, but my goodness, I don't want dead doctrine. I want the fire. I want the Bible and the Spirit. I want the Word. How many want the Word and the Spirit? Wave your hand at me. The Word and the Spirit. Not the spirit alone, you go crazy. Not the word alone, you get dry. The word and the spirit. Not emotionalism, but my goodness, is God dead? He's not. He's alive. He's alive. Close your eyes. Choir, walk out. Go, men, go up in the balcony. Just take your positions at the end of some row. Come on, ladies, men, move. I need some singers here with me, though. Come on, let's with our eyes closed sing. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit. and deacons, let's go out too. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome Everybody, let's lift our hands. Lift your hands and sing, everyone. Lay hands on the end of the row. Go from one row to another. Just lay hands on the person on the end, on their shoulder. Oh God, fill the whole row with your fire, Lord. Fill the church with your spirit and fire, Lord, and power and grace and love. Fire. Pray out loud, deacons. Pray out loud, pastors. They'll hear you. Everybody stand. Everyone stand and sing. Holy Spirit, thou art well. Sing to the Lord. Sing. Oh, Holy Spirit, come. We know you're here, but come deeper. Burn deeper, burn stronger. Go to another row if you have to. Praise the Lord, everyone. Open your mouth and pray. Praise the Lord while they're playing it. 
Come on, everybody in the building, say, Spirit of the living God, you are welcome in my life, in my family. Burn, Spirit, burn. Spread your fire. Give illumination. Get rid of the junk in my life. Get rid of the junk in my life. Everything that's not of Jesus, burn it, burn it, burn it, burn it out, Lord. Set me on fire. Don't be embarrassed. Pray out loud. We praise you, God. We need you, Holy Spirit. Thou art welcome. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. When my people call, I will answer. When my people call, I will answer. Fresh baptism, fresh experience of your spirit, Lord. Fresh filling, fresh filling, Lord. For every one of us, God, please, God, a fresh filling, fresh baptism, Lord. with me everyone 